We read yet another interesting story. It's about nature and also a sad detail as to how we human beings can destroy nature which is a gift to us. It's only a story but there is a lesson in it, right? Something that we have to take to ourselves and think and change if we have that habit, right? All right. So the story is about a beautiful hillside where all the flowers are blooming and this uh, spring all the flowers have been blooming radiantly and seeing all the flowers bloomed all the honeybees have come in swarms and they're enjoying the nectar and the old uncle tree which is on that hill slope is very happy because it's a buzzing hillside and then the unexpected happens the little mischievous boys come to play. I'm sure they were in a mood to play. They must not have noticed that the nature and the beauty around it, they were just focused on playing, which usually you children are. But this lesson will give you an understanding of the nature that is around us. So maybe we will be become better aware of it through this story. So when they were playing, they happened to go on all the flowers and destroy them so then there were no bees coming to the hillside and the old uncle tree was very sad that is the story if you did not read it yet i am sure you will enjoy reading it so pause the video and go ahead and read this unit and you will find a lot of new and interesting things in this story as well if you have already read the story let's move on to find out what are the new words we have learned in this unit. The first word, bloomed, grew beautifully into a flower. So usually the word bloom is used for flowers, but sometimes it can be used to describe a situation or a person. For example, Sheila bloomed after her long holiday. And that talks about she was recharged or refreshed or bloomed beautifully after the holiday. Colony, people living in a certain neighborhood. I'm sure we all have our neighborhoods. Some people live in colonies itself. Some of them are called colonies, some of them are called neighborhoods, right? And uh, colony is a group of people living in a certain neighborhood radiant glowing brightly so here on the hillside the flowers were growing glowing so brightly that the honeybees came to take the nectar another example that we can use for radiant is she was radiant or she looked radiant on her birthday she was radiant on seeing her grandparents after a very long time so those are words we can use. So that meaning is beam brightly or glow brightly. Harvest, the natural product gathered by cutting crops in a single season. So we all know rice, wheat, corn, etc. are harvested in a single season. Okay, so that is the meaning of harvest. Natural product gathered by cutting crops in a single season nectar a thick juice produced by the flowers that is why the honeybees came so they will take the nectar and then they will also help in pollinating the flowers and these honeybees use this nectar to make honey that we use in our houses mischievous causing trouble in a playful manner yes the boys also didn't mean to harm their nature they just didn't think i'm sure they were just so focused on their fun time, their play time. Despair, loss of hope. 
that was what old uncle tree was feeling because all the flowers and the beauty of the hill was destroyed which is a sad thing loss of hope moving on to the next exercise in page number 34 choose and underline the correct rhyming words from the given options remember rhyming words rhyming words are words that are having repetition of the same or similar sounds right so here we can see some examples gaze let's look at a few that are given here haze gas geese buzz so as we mentioned earlier it's the same or similar ending sound so which is having the same ending haze a's and then we add a g it's gaze and we add a h it's haze so those would be the perfect rhyming word for for each other gaze and haze let's take a look at two more examples and then you are ready to do the rest of them the next one number three honey bonny loony money phony which one would be most suited for honey yes money the ending sounds are same and the words are also same let's look at number seven coat what would be the best rhyming word for that caught pot goat got so coat and goat both would be the better rhyming partners now next one is match the following with opposites remember we learnt opposites as well opposites are words that contradict each other so we have to join the column a words to column b words let's see a few of them mischievous we learned the meaning that it's causing trouble in a playful manner so what would be the appropriate opposite for mischievous i think well behaved would be the right answer yes that is the right answer radiant radiant means glowing brightly we saw the example of girl glowing brightly for her birthday all those examples we learned and even the hillside flowers were glowing radiantly by which the honeybees came so here radiantly means glowing brightly so what would be the opposite let's see in column b common start well behaved fade dull built dull dull is opposite of radiant exceptional the third word unusual okay not very common so what is the column b is common all right i think you can go ahead and finish the rest of the match the following now that you know how to do it in page number 35 you find answer the following questions it's all about the story so if you have read the story well you will be quick to answer these questions so please take out your notebooks and your pens and start answering after pausing the video or if you would like we'll finish the whole unit all the exercises and you can finish the answer the following at the end of this video what was the name of the old tree let's do just one or two examples so you will get started what was the name of the old tree will you remember that we make you write so that you will learn to make proper sentence and more you practice the better you get at it so remember to start with a capital and end with a period or a full stop what was the name of the old tree old uncle tree remember the name of the old tree was old uncle tree and full stop the next question also we will do who came to gather nectar from the flowers start with the capital the honey bees came to gather nectar from the flowers full stop these are all sentences that does not need an exclamatory mark or a question mark most of the sentences require only a full stop or a period 
when the sentence has excitement and strong feeling then we will use a exclamatory mark or when there is a question that is when we will use a question mark. All right, moving on to the exercise D. Who said the following? Again, this is also going to be very easy because you read the story. Why don't you go ahead and answer these in your notebook as well or in your textbook. By pausing the video, you can finish the activity and then join us for the exercises. Page number 36, grammar time. Let's see what is a new grammar that we are going to learn today. It's about adjectives. Do you know what adjectives are? Adjectives are otherwise called as describing words. Describing words. Yes, adjectives help us to describe a noun. Adjectives help us to describe a noun. Now, what all do we describe about a noun? The quality of the noun. So, what are nouns? Do you remember? Yes. Person, animal, place, thing. Yes. Any of these, if we have to describe a quality of it. For example, my mom is a beautiful lady. Or my mom is a good cook. So good is the quality of mom's cooking. The next one. Pizza. Pizza is yummy. Or ice cream is yummy. So when you say these things, the person who is hearing is also understanding, okay, this is yummy. I need to taste it. So a sentence, when you describe it with the help of an adjective, it makes your sentence more powerful or more effective. So that's why adjectives are very important in a sentence. It helps you just describe a noun in the best way possible so that the idea is conveyed to the hearer or the person who is reading your essay or any of those things the way you, when you communicate if you use adjectives it gives a punch to your sentence. So let's take a look at the adjective exercise that is given below. Harish is a there's, there are a few words given in the hint box. Let's see what suits the best. Harish is a loose boy. That doesn't go well. Clever boy. Yes, clever goes well. Clever is used to describe the noun Harish, right? The rose is a dash flower. Let's see what will suit best. Pretty flower. Pretty is the adjective that is used to describe the noun flower. I have a dash pen. So here, like we learn, adjectives describe quality, quantity, or that means the number, size, shape, and color. Okay. So here we see we are using the adjective of color. I have a black pen. Okay, the color is used. Let's take a look one more example so you'll understand better. There is a dash lake near my school. What would be the ideal verse? Big. So this is describing again this adjective is describing the lake and this is a it describes the size. This adjective is the adjective that describes the size of the noun. So now you know it's a big lake. When you say there is a lake near my school, people can have different thoughts. They can even think small, tiny. But when you say a big lake, then everybody will know, yes, it's a big lake. Nobody will then think it's a small lake. Nobody will imagine that, right? So you've conveyed the exact thing because of your adjective, right? Then the last one, the lion is a dash animal dangerous now when you say it's a dangerous animal we know we have to keep away from that animal so adjectives are very useful in a sentence it will convey your communication or your sentence that you're making more it will make it more 
effective. So from now on, remember to use good adjectives. And you have adjectives to help you describe a noun's shape, size, color, quality, everything. Okay. So now we move on to the activity where we have to use some punctuations. What are punctuations? They are symbols that are used to tell us, to t make a sentence more clearer. Punctuations are marks that are used to make a sentence more clearer. Okay. So what are the things that the punctuations do? They also help us separate a part of the sentence. So if suppose there is a sentence that is given here, Jenny is tall, active and smart. Let's take a look at that sentence. Je so I read it like this. Jenny is tall, active, smart. Does that convey anything? It's like it doesn't make so much sense to the hearer or you who are listening. So let's try putting punctuations. What are punctuations? Punctuations are marks that separate sentences and make meanings more clearer. So let's take a look at Jenny's example. When we add comma, let's see how it changes a sentence. Jenny is tall, active and smart. See, it became clearer and the person also who is listening has understood better than Jenny is tall, active, smart. Right? It's given an extra effect for the sentence and the sentence has become more clearer for you. Okay. So what are the punctuations? Full stops and commas. Full stops and commas as you can see on the screen. Now what is full stop or period? It is used to tell you it's the end of a sentence. What is a comma? Comma helps us to understand a pause in a sentence. That doesn't mean it's the end of the sentence. It's just a pause in a sentence. When is it ending? It's ending when you use a full stop. But a pause, but a comma is to pause. All right, let's see a little more about comma before we go into the exercise. These commas are used to separate when there are more than one person mentioned in a sentence. Let's take the sentence in point number two. Ajay, Vijay and Suraj are brothers. So there are three or more people here. So we will use a comma to separate Ajay, Vijay and then and has come. So then we don't need to use a comma. So Ajay, Vijay and Suraj are brothers. That's how we will read it once the pause comes or the comma comes. Again I'll repeat commas are used to in show us a pause in a sentence. So let's see the sentence once more. Ajay, Vijay and Suraj are brothers. But with the pause, Ajay, Vijay and Suraj are brothers. There is a little more effectiveness to your sentence. Commas are also used to separate three or four items in a list. Let's take the example of Rima. Rima had apples, cookies and milk. Now let's try it with the commas. Rima had apples, cookies and milk. So we put a comma after apples. So it gave, gave a pause but it made your sentence more clearer. Alright, so I am sure you learnt well about adjectives and punctuation marks. Let's see how you can learn to communicate by these things. Let's read the following lines about flowers. So now your activity that you can do is listen carefully and absorb whatever is being told. So you can use this to write or speak at a later time. Flowers are colorful parts of a plant. So here you can see it's a full stop which tells you that that sentence is come to an end. The next sentence we are beginning. So it starts with a capital. Flowers produce nectar. 
Insects like bees and butterflies suck this nectar. These colorful flowers attract insects. Full stop. Flowers have beautiful smell. They are found in gardens and also at our homes. End of sentence. Some flowers grow on big trees. Comma. Did you see? It gives a pause and then we continue in the same sentence. The sentence is not over. Some flowers grow on big trees while others grow on small bushes. So it's a long sentence. To make it more clearer, we had to use a pause. Now you understood the meaning clearer because there was a pause or a comma. Speaking, can you think of different places where we can see flowers? Make a list and discuss with your parents or grandparents. I'm sure you will get more ideas from them as well. You can write it down. Writing. This is interesting. Write down the names of flowers by filling the blanks. It's a fun activity and I'm sure you will learn the names of more flowers. So that brings us to the end of this story and the exercises. Let's move on to page number 38. Kind Words. It's a poem by H.W. Longfellow. A powerful and simple poem. Let's just read it quickly. Kind hearts are the gardens. Kind thoughts are the roots. Kind words are the blossoms. Kind deeds are the fruits. Love is the sweet sunshine that warms into life. For only in darkness grows hatred and strife. It's a powerful poem about kind words, kind deeds, kind thoughts and kind hearts. What is the opposite? Hatred and strife, right? So it's a powerful poem, right? Let's see what are the new words we learnt in this. Page number 39. Blossoms. Very similar to what we learnt in the previous uh, chapter. Bloom, blossom, all are very similar words that are used to describe flowers. We also, we also can use it in the context of human beings as well. Here, let's say an example. Blossoms mean fully bloomed flowers. So like I said, bloom and blossom has very similar meanings. Cherry blossoms came out early this year. There are cherry blossoms which are very beautiful. They are fully bloomed flowers which are pink in color. So cherry blossoms came out early this year. That's just used to describe flowers. She blossomed after her first birthday. So that is another way you can use the word blossom. Deeds. The next word is deeds. Means actions. Helping a person in need is a kind deed. We all know that. Helping somebody in need is an act of kindness. Hatred, opposite of kindness. Feeling of strong dislike. She had such hatred for the man who robbed her of her money. Yeah, that's a very strong feeling. Strife, an unpleasant disagreement. Strife is unpleasant. It causes a lot of break in relationships and uh, you know even neighbors, family members. If there is strife, there's always division. So let's not have strife. Rather have kind words, kind hearts, kind deeds like the, the author of the poem says. It's an unpleasant disagreement, strife. Strife is seen in our words or in our action. It causes hurt for others. Let's learn something new today. In page number 39 itself, there's something called compound words. What are compound words? Compound always means something more complex than simple. Simple, the opposite of simple is complex. Okay, so compound words are some complex words. Not too complex for you, but it's just when two words are put together, Two small words are put together, then we form a new word that is called a compound word. Is that very difficult? I'm sure it's not. Let's take some examples, then it'll be 
really clear to you. Birth day, birthday. Note book. When you join together, notebook. Sun light. When you join together, sunlight. So two small words joined together forms a new word and it's a compound word. Easy, isn't it? Let's take a look at some of them. Sun, light, life, time, no, body, up, side, bath, room, him, self. See, it's not so hard. Just two words and a new word is formed that is called compound words. We're coming to the end of this English term one. Whoa. Um, did you learn a lot of things? I hope you did. A lot of grammar and I'm sure you are using all of those that you learnt in your sentences while you're speaking, reading, writing. Yeah? Alright. Question and answers. Be ready with your notebooks. Write the answers according to the poem. We have read it. You all have read it. I'm sure you know the answers by now. We are continuing to learn adjectives in this grammar time as well. Read the sentences carefully and underline the adjectives. The first one is done for us but we will still take a look at it. Rakesh's elder brother. Elder. That is the characteristic or the adjective used to describe the brother. He is elder to Rakesh and he is a head boy of the school. Let's see another one. This is easy. I have planted pink roses. The color is used to describe the noun rose. Pink rose. Third one. The clever cat fooled the dog. Clever is used to describe. That is, remember we studied quality of the noun. Okay. So here the quality of the cat was it was clever. So likewise you can go ahead and see the adjectives in the rest of the sentences. So every time you do an exercise remember practice makes you perfect. So now you will, you will know about adjectives thoroughly at the end of this unit. That brings us to the end of this unit.